Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another short little unboxing slash unpackaging to share with you guys. Uh, I, I, I have a guess on who sent it. I, do you guys have a guess? <laughs> I, I just a, there's, there was a hint on the outside of the package. So we'll see. Thanks so much to uh, Sencut for sending this in for uh, me to take a look at. I honestly cannot remember what the model slash models are, but we're gonna we're gonna find out. Uh, thanks so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me. There's a link for Patreon right down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Um, I'm pretty sure these are available. So I will link them down below for you guys to check out if you want to. Uh, it does help my channel when you use my links. But it's up to you. Um, it feels like just one. I think, it's, I think we just have one here. It's actually been a little bit since I've received anything from Sencut. If you don't know who Sencut is... There's we, and then there's Civivi. Whoops, we don't have to open that further. And then Civivi, there's another level, I don't want to say below Civivi, because now it's like they're making knives that are like on par. But it's kind of like another budget brand under the umbrella of we knives, right? So what do we have here? We have the Brazoria. Brazoria, okay. Well, let's take a look and see what we've got here. The Brazoria it comes with a lot of stuff. Okay. Uh, it looks very similar to a Civivi, right? Here we go. Are you ready? Oh, it flips nice. Hey, it looks nice too. It's also definitely a full size knife and a not a super narrow profile, but a narrow enough profile that uh, it probably won't be that problematic to carry. We still have <laughs> the Wii, Civivi, and Sencut uh, insisted upon Goosebill clip, which that's I expect at that point. Not my favorite clip by a landslide, but uh, what are you going to do? We have D2 and G10, so I am hoping that this is a reasonable price. Uh, you guys can let me know. I mean, obviously, I'm going to go look right after I'm done with this video. But at the time of recording, it's just me and this rectangle and this knife, so I have no way to know. But usually, stuff like this comes in around 50 bucks. Um, it would be really cool if it was like a little bit less than that, but uh, what are you going to do? Um, the liner lock disengagement is great. The detent is great. All of that, fantastic. Can you use the fuller to reverse flick it? You absolutely can. There is no double clutch. I like those fullers because it gives you, you know, for people who want to like kick it in way up there, you can do that. Or if you want to get it, you know, way down low, that's really nice actually. Um, there's a little tiny flat. This is kind of, I'm, I'm going to call this a clip point. Uh, you know, I mean, what, whatever, Mod modified or just like a aggressive dropped clip point, drop modified sheep's pickle, <laughs> whatever, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's got plenty of a puncture tip and is very thin, very thin down at the edge, pretty thin on the blade stock. That looks to be something probably 115 thousands at max. We also have garage stops. What does that mean? It means that the stops are on the blade and then they actually sort of sink in behind, uh, the scale and then kind of pull into their parked position, uh, on either side of the liners. Um, hence, you know, the garage, like this kind of analogy, All right? Please tell us how that works, Metal Complex. We didn't understand, you know, the first time. We need a visual and verbal example of that so uh, that we can understand. And please drag the dialogue out. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, guy. I'm sorry, just in case. I had one, I did have one person ask me one time. The nice thing about this knife is because we have um, the Jade uh, G10 scales and the black liners, you can really see what that looks like. On all other knives where that's the case, you have a really dark scale material and generally they're sunk back there a bit. I just totally filleted the dead skin on my thumb. <laughs> it's sharp, definitely. Um, it's a good thing there's a layer there. Let's give it a go on a piece of paper here. I'm curious. Ah, it's freaking ridiculously sharp. Um, there are no, <laughs> you can barely hear it. There are no, uh, there's no like drag folds or anything like that. What, basically what I'm talking about is look at these getting natural curly cues off of the, uh, the end of that there. 
Um, the edges of the paper are not folding up off of the, um, the cut, so it's more of a slice and much less of a tear. Uh, it's dividing the paper very well. Sorry, I'm clearing that dead skin. Um, yeah, it's very sharp, and that's good. I mean, that's one of those things that you expect when you buy a knife, regardless of what the price is. You expect it to be sharp right out of the box. And the... What is this? The Brazoria. Uh, there you go. And you know what? It came one of those little... It came with one of these. So instead of going through... You know, I know you can just click on the link and go through specs, but let's, let's look, because it will list all the different, well, usually it lists all the different variants. Okay, so here you go. You want to pause that and look at anything. There you go. You can take a look at it. So, if we're going, if we're going D2, guys, 58's not going to cut it. Uh, that's, uh, that's too low for D2. 60 should be, as far as I understand, uh, send cut, if you're watching, 60 should be the minimum. It should, I think D2 is supposed to be hardened between 60 and 62. 58 is not a good, uh, that's not a good spot for D2. So I would, um, I think uh, <laughs> people in the knife community, you know, these, the, there are plenty of people out there testing these things. Um, so if they're coming back with subpar performance as far as D2, because D2 is supposed to have reasonable edge retention if, just like any other steel, if it's within a specific parameter. And now a lot of people get confused by that. They think that it means anything that is above 60 is good and anything that is below 60 is bad. That's not true. Each composition has its own range, right? There's an optimal range. For example, ZDP 189 at 61 would be absolute dog crap. I mean, it would be wet, golden corral, just sloppy garbage. Uh, <laughs> sorry for the visual. So that's supposed to be up there. That composition needs to be 67, 68 to shine properly. Uh, whereas M390 really only needs to be 61, 62, maybe 63 to get that type of, you know, edge performance it's supposed to get. 1095, on the other hand, really should not be higher, as far as I understand, than like 59. Some people will say 58 because of the emphasis on toughness. So... Don't get hung up on the 59 bad, 60 good. Don't get, don't get hung up on that. But as far as D2 goes, I believe it's supposed to be 60 to 62. Somebody who heat treats blades regularly or just has a better understanding of ingot formed or non-powder formed D2 in general. I don't know if the rules are different for the powder version D2 since the carbides form more plentifully or more they're, they're distributed more evenly throughout the edge. I'm, I'm not really sure. Somebody who knows better than me, feel free to chime in. I'm an I'm a design reviewer, right? I don't make or sell or create this type of stuff. Um, I just, you know, I read. Um, but I can tell you the D2 blades that were heated properly definitely cut longer, right? And I'm talking about chopping concrete blocks now. If I'm talking about cutting stuff like cardboard, they're going to cut longer at 61, 62 than they do at 58, 59, substantially, considering... There is an exponential effect for every step that you go up in Rockwell hardness, every number you go up in Rockwell. Anyways, the design, though, I can't speak much for the heat treatment on the blade. The design feels pretty good. In any case, even if you are only spending $50 on a pocket knife, its engine should still perform correctly, right? So D2 should still be heat treated correctly. We can't cut corners and say, oh, well, it's an inexpensive knife so they can cut corners on the heat treat. No. Uh, even at 50 bucks, D2 should be heat treated correctly. So far, that's my only criticism just off the paperwork that they gave me. Outside of that, the, the knife seems, you know, nice. Like I said, I'll link this guy down below. This is not a review. This is just an unboxing and first impressions. It's very smooth too, by the way. Uh, just an unboxing and first impressions. The full review will come two to three weeks down the road. Not because it takes that long to review a knife, but I've got a bajillion knives to review, so this thing has to get in line. Um, anyways, thanks so much to SendCat for sending this in for me to take a look at. Uh, where'd my card go? There it is. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have... Lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on the Middle Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.